the next one that we have is that one that I said, The Apprentice, which yeah. um, has had a very interesting rollout. It is based off of a book, and it is flipping the idea of uh, Donald Trump's show, obviously known as The Apprentice, where he would fire people. Mm-hmm. And now it's kind of showcasing who was the who is he the apprentice to? Right. And uh, I have not seen the documentary about this man, Roy Cohn. Roy I remember Cohn, when yeah. that came out at Sundance. Yeah, my Roy Cohn. That documentary looks scary because yeah. it talks about all of the insidious things that he was connected to in order to become the powerful individual that he was, right? Mm-hmm. A, a lot of ditty like experiences there with the parties that he threw to, to get some people to understand uh, at what level this man was and how he had so much control. This is the guy who taught Donald Trump. And I found that element of the story fascinating. And mm-hmm. I thought the performances were really good, even though they do taper out <laughs> at some points. What do you think about The Apprentice? I thought it was really interesting in, in a lot of the ways that you're talking about, in the ways that it's trying to sort of like um, – put together the formula that made the the man that Bad, made yeah, right? the yeah like you, you put all the pieces together to how does this sort of ego and force for chaos sort of get launched into the yeah. world um there are some ways in which i kind of think this movie might have been more interesting if it wasn't so literally about donald trump if it was about more of like a a trumpian style figure because i i think sometimes it spends a little time in the weeds of like you know here's this thing that you recognize oh here's roger stone he knows a thing or two about dirty politics mm-hmm. but like I, Pritzker you know, got a laugh at our theater because we're from <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's stuff in there that that's like kind of fun and interesting. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, it is a detractor for sure because I've seen a lot of people have this debate of like who wants to see a Donald Trump movie. Yeah. So close to an election, whether you hate him, whether you love him, there's not really a, a push and pull for you to have here. But this has been happening a lot this year. Civil War. No one in America, because it all comes from America, cared from that movie because it was an outsider kind of going, what if we use you guys as a roadmap? This comes from a similar director, someone who does not care to see America as anything other than individuals that he can play with. So I I still found it fascinating, even though mm-hmm. I can admit I was like, I don't, who do I recommend this to? Like, no right. one's going to want to see this movie. No one's going to want to waste their time if they don't want to get to know Trump or, or especially because he sympathizes with him in some moments. Right. And. Some people don't want to see that. And this has been a, a director who's pushed the boundaries, uh, Ali Abbasi with uh, Holy Spider, which I know was also at Khan and got a lot of pushback. You remember Border, right? I think yeah. we talked Border together. We did. Border's crazy. I highly recommend that one. But the same thing here. Um, a lot of the push and pull, like you were mentioning, is how is Trump becoming the figure that we know him to be? There's this element right here that you see in the uh, the, the poster right there where – we all know he speaks in like these like almost side tangents or, you know, it was very good. I, it was great. It was great. It was all this. And it's almost like he learned it in this moment where he was on a call and he kept getting pitched. No, add this word, add this word. Yeah. It's, it's some fantastic fork. Can you say that again? I think we got the name <laughs> of our group type stuff. Very goofy, but it worked for me. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just it's a little overly long. It, it is o- overly long, and I think again the whole thing, the, the whole fact that we know this is Trump, and like unless you've been burying your head in the sand for the past decade or decade plus, like yeah. you kind of know where this story is going. You 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 know the man that this guy is going to transform into the the ruthless capitalist monster. Um, so I think at at its length, you know, it takes a lot of the air out of it because you kind of understand what it's doing before it does it in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, it's, it, it still is interesting. And that, that's again, why I, I wonder what else, um, if, if it was a little less connected, maybe it could, because it is very into this like pop psychoanalysis of, of Trump that I think we are a wash in right now. Right. Like th- this is We're too close you, to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, you can't turn on MSNBC with somebody trying to diagnose, like, why does Trump act the way that Trump does? And uh, yeah. this movie, you know, in some ways it feels like it's reiterating a lot of those points, even if it's telling them in a very, like, clear headed, cogent way. Um, I like that he's treated as a human and not like th- this, like, completely alien uh evil guy you have um, to yeah yeah you have to. right because it's not like it's trying to make necessarily make you sympathetic towards him but mm-hmm. it, it's understanding where he came from how this journey 
uh, yeah. happen. And in that respect, I thought Sebastian Stan did a pretty great, great job uh, embodying the young Donald Trump before he hey, kind of say. did the added all the cartoonish mannerisms when he sort of remolded say. himself into a, a TV say. personality. Yeah. You look yeah. at some of those older interviews with Trump and he's a lot more restrained. He's he's more of like a real person. And, and I think Stan really evoked that. Uh, with you first half I thought was a lot stronger I thought he was cooking with it I'm like mm -hmm. wow you are really living breathing this character and when they would do a lot of the interview bits you get that kind of element where a lot of actors can really mimic uh, uh, a news clip that everybody knows mm -hmm. and then they go back to their normal you know what isn't been what hasn't been recorded what people don't see and then it, it starts being a little different right because he's got to play this character and say words and do things that we have not seen pre-recorded and i felt as he turns into this trump figure um towards the second half of the movie he really starts to become a little bit more of a caricature which is kind of the point but i would see the accent slip and slide a lot mm -hmm. he would do like a recording about like maybe i should be president and he does a very specific way of talking and then he continues a regular scene in the movie and it's like what happened you, like, you <laughs> couldn't do your style in there because we all know that clip and now you're yeah. going back to the other way and I, I thought he did solid for the most part. I like like around 75% of his performance. I thought it was mm. very good, especially as a young Trump when he's knocking around trying to get the stuff ready for the Trump villages before leading up to the Trump Tower. He's got this Wolf of Wall Street hustle mentality that I can yeah. see a lot of people connecting with. And that's why the movie does a really great job at showcasing you. You know who he's going to become. Let's show you all the moments with his brother, with his wife, with his father, all these different things that caused him to suppress his emotions to become this tycoon. And I, I thought the story element really worked well. Um, I thought uh, our boy over here, Jeremy, as Roy Cohen, great. He yeah. was great. He's the best no, performance. He was in, great. He's the best performance in the film. I kind of think this this movie Can is, argue, yeah? it, it, it sort of feels like it's not in the Oscars race. And if anything, he should be in it. He like he's, should be. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we know Jeremy Strong is an actor who can completely transform, and it, it's one of those performances where, where, like, you know, even subtle changes in his character are so yes. registerable. Uh, as you track Roy Cohn's journey, he kind of, as he gets older, he becomes sicker and mm -hmm. uh, more disconnected from stuff. And I think the way he played that was great. Yeah, like there's worse versions of this movie where it's like cough into a napkin and there's some blood or something like that. And, it, you know, it's Strong is able to pull it off with so much more subtlety than that. It's, uh -huh. it's, no, it's a fantastic he's, performance. Uh, uh, top best supporting performance for the year, in my opinion, definitely going in my books because uh, he's consistent throughout. We also got um, – I always forget that the man had two wives, bro. That's why. <laughs> so, more right, than two, I think. Then, Probably more, and who even knows how many other partners and stuff, but uh, we had Maria Bakalova in this who um comes in about midway through the movie, mm -hmm. uh, as his to a degree muse. They kind of play with the idea that she also was a big um architect, I guess, or, or designer, designer, and that yeah. she was responsible for a lot of the stuff that Trump was pushing, and that there was this big, you know, uh, I guess fighting infighting that happened between the two of them. But mm -hmm. there is one moment that happens in the movie where um. I mean, my whole theater went quiet. I think you can assume what it is between mm -hmm. both of them. And I, so I didn't know too much of them. So I was kind of in this this state where I was just like, can you showcase a scene like that? Because this man already got in a lot of trouble for the um, the, the murders in Holy Spider that happened yeah. to a real woman. Can and you show something like that just to get back at the guy? Are you not hurting a real life figure, like a real life yeah. woman who would have been in that incident? Yeah. So I googled I mean, it and it turns out this might have been true. Yeah, which is I think so she sick. she wrote about it in in one of her memoirs or something like that. So and then retracted it. Yeah, which you know, I, I so don't know. All we, he did was go, "Hey, I'm just showcasing what you wrote about." And bro, my stomach sank. I was like, "What?" Like I thought he had made it up for the movie. No, yeah. And, so I felt a way about that. I was like, "Whoa, crazy stuff there." Mm -hmm. um, him him flying over sees to get stuff done <laughs> the videotapes when they're showcased in order to get some ordinances done I, I think there's a lot of really big push and pull stuff especially just as a new york movie him being on what, yeah. 42nd street wanting to, to to reshape it make it something mm -hmm. different i don't know there's this a lot in there where it's like he did affect new york like you cannot yeah. deny that 
<laughs> this was one of the first times I've ever watched a movie that takes place in the past and seen locations where they shot and been like, huh, yeah, I know that plant. I that, guess that does kind of look like 1970s New York. Right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, really good stuff. Um, yeah. I think the, the one who played uh, his dad, Fred, was pretty yes. good. Yes. Uh, shoot. Um, What's that actor's name? Uh, he's a just really good, good performances. actor. Good oh, performances. No, I clicked on Freddie. Martin Freddy Donovan also- isn't? Freddie was the heart of the movie for sure. Oh, that's yeah. who Freddie was, bro. Oh, yes. Uh, the guy from Alice Darling uh, plays uh, <sighs> Donald Trump's brother, late brother in this film. Damn. Good on him for making me hate him in one movie and then the other. Here we go. Wait, was it really him? Yeah, dude. Martin Donovan's a great actor. Uh, playing uh, Hell yeah, Fred he Senior. Is. He's the one who explains the rules in Tenet. Yeah, it's my guy. Damn. Yeah, so there's a lot no, of strong performances. I, I don't know if we even said that. I, I thought Maria Bakalova was pretty strong in this as well. She's good. Yeah. She is. She's really good. I, I wanted to, the I wanted them to give her more, I guess. Yeah. Um, and they, they again, that one scene that I'm talking about, that's a very emotional scene to portray, especially mm-hmm. the follow-up to that in the aftermath. But again, she's she's very solid. Um, I don't see her getting a nom for this like she was able to with Borat. <laughs> uh, which you've seen that they're, they're reevaluating Borat. Yeah, well, I not, mean, Sasha's do, here doing them that. no favors by by oh, whatever. Oh my but, goodness! Yeah, yeah, but no, she she was decent as well. And overall, I think it's a I I do think it's a solid movie that's just come out in a time where people aren't going to embrace it because they're either too thing. close to it. And I think it's going to take a little bit to be able to just view this figure and just see what he was trying to do with the movie. I am really fascinated to see what happens to this movie in 10 years time. Like, will we look back on this film as this kind of like clear eyed portrait of this massive political figure, this incisive document that really spoke to the heart of who he was? Or will we look at it, look at it as like liberal cringe from the mid 2020s where where we thought like, oh, maybe this movie yeah. could, could stop whatever is happening. Uh, I, I lean yeah, I towards it'll, it'll hold up. Cause I think it's, uh, I think it holds up. Like I, again, my whole argument about it, not like it could have worked if it wasn't about Trump is cause I think th- at its heart, the story that it's telling about yes. like, uh, becoming this kind of, uh, monster, monster th- this, uh, single focused success machine. Yeah. Uh, what, it, what it, the results of that are, there will be blood. I'm trying to think of some other ones that that all do this thing where you're following mm-hmm. them along. Uh, not not too long ago, there was a motherless Brooklyn movie about uh, was it Robert Moses from New York and how he what he did in order to be able to create stuff. I saw it very similar to that vein. So I, I know people are too close to it, but I, I think it works kind of like a Wolf of Wall Street, where mm-hmm. some people may see the first half and cheer it on. They want to live by those three rules, right, in order to be able to become successful. But it's realizing, you know, this movie at least did not stop like Wolf of Wall Street which you needed to understand in the subtext. No, you should not be this guy. This one definitely showcases to you. Yeah, you do not want to be this guy. You're going to lose all of your empathy, all of your emotions in order to be able to win. And again, that's why I think Jeremy Strong was the the best part of the movie because he says that at one point. I don't care what I have to do to get that lady sentenced or Mm -hmm. specifically he wanted something done. He goes, I'm willing to bend the rules to get what should be done done and that's the scariest part is when you truly and utterly believe it so i think it's a solid movie i think it'll grow i think conservatives should watch it i think liberals should watch it i think it it works because he based a lot of it on this man's trajectory and uh great performances at the center of it yeah i know i know you were talking about earlier you're not sure who the audience ultimately will be but i i think i agree with you that like i think people will actually would be surprised by what they take away from it i I think it's a it's not as sensationalistic as it might seem or as even yeah. like its director is portraying it as like, I don't know if you see Ali Abbasi just going on Twitter to troll Trump, like, Hey, come watch our movie or whatever. But like, it's really not, it. it's so, it's so much subtler than that. I think. I think so too. Yeah. I think it, I think it's like a warning shot. It's like his whiplash. Like, Hey, I know you want to become this great thing. Be careful who you're leaving in the dust yeah. behind. And I think that those are the best type of stories to tell. Yeah. Don't, don't make it some like crazy figure, but. Uh, Josh in the, the live event. stream said, isn't there a camcorder filter or something? I, I wonder how that's used. I think they shot some of this on uh, videotape because it kind of has this sort of ugly 80s good. look to it. And I, I yeah. say ugly like in, in an intentional way. It's trying to evoke the time. And I think as sort of his like moral character gets uglier, the look of the film gets a little uglier too. Good. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it works. 
that works for me. But yeah, catch this one. I'm sure it'll be out on VOD, which is probably yeah. the better place to see it. Um, I, I yeah. would imagine that it, I'd be surprised if they don't get it out within the next week. I mean, we're we're eight days away. Oh, we're eight days away from another president. Can you believe that? That is insane. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. I was like, okay, so World yeah. Series Game 7 should probably be. Oh, yeah. Then we get a new president. <laughs> I'm just looking at the schedule. I was like, dude, what? So much happening uh, for another four years, Zach. 